Next, we move on to section 7.2, where we'll talk about the concept of a completeness fund. This is a short segment in the curriculum, and I'll just make a few simple points. If a manager is using, say, a bottom-up approach, and he is identifying underpriced securities, and he creates a portfolio of, let's say, A, B, C, D, E, five stocks. Now, since he's going bottom up, chances are that he isn't necessarily properly diversified. He might be heavily weighted in just two sectors. When this happens, what the manager can do is once he recognizes that the portfolio he has created through this bottom up approach is skewed, let's say, towards technology and utilities, then he can add some securities to what he originally came up with to create what is called a more complete or a better diversified portfolio. And what he adds to do this is called the completion portfolio. Because in a sense, it is completing this somewhat undiversified portfolio. Now, does this sound good? It sounds good from a big picture perspective. But it also possibly diminishes the upside he has from here. If he's done a really good job of identifying mispriced securities, then potentially through diversifying, he reduces the benefit of what he, the active work that he has done with these five securities. So that's the basic point. Next, alpha and beta separation, and this is the last part of section seven. Now, this is a useful concept. Let's imagine that you give some of your money to a index fund manager. So this index fund manager is managing, let's say, against the S&P 500. So what sort of return are you getting? You're essentially getting the market, right? So that, what is the risk that you are taking? You are taking market risk. And how can that market risk be depicted? With a beta. So you are taking a beta exposure over here. Now, in parallel, let's say you also give some of your money to a market neutral fund manager who has a long short position. And this market neutral, where you are both, where this fund manager is both long and short, how are you deriving return over here? Are you taking any market exposure here? No. Here the market exposure is zero. And there is an alpha though, right? So notice what you've done. You have separated the beta and the alpha. And then depending on what you are trying to accomplish, you can put 80% of your money here and 20% of your money here. So depending on your perspective and depending on your objective, you can essentially put the appropriate weightage in the beta and the alpha. So what you have essentially done here is alpha and beta separation. Now, there is one more point in this segment which I think is worth talking about. That's the concept of a portable alpha. So, I'll give you exactly the same example that is given in the curriculum. So we have a situation where there is a beta exposure to an efficient portfolio, and that efficient portfolio is the Russell 200. Russell 200 represents 200 of the biggest stocks in the, in the Russell 500 or Russell, yeah, I think in the Russell 500. But these are big stocks. Are you likely to find inefficiencies in large cap US stocks? Probably not. So does it make sense here to simply get your beta exposure over here? So you get your beta exposure. So you get your large cap US market return by giving your money to a fund manager who is investing in the Russell 2000. Do you think the investment fee will be high here or low? The fees are likely to be low. If you have a fund manager who's simply managing against an index, fee managers are low because this is clearly a passive strategy. All right, now in addition to this, you want some active, you want some alpha. So for that, you go to Japan, and there, for example, 
you you figure out that there are some inefficiencies in the Japanese market. So in the Japanese market, you go with a fund manager who is using a long, short strategy. And with that long, short strategy, you will have a beta equal to zero. And there you will have, for example, alpha by taking long positions in underprice and short positions in overpriced securities. And the curriculum mentions that here, for example, you might have an expected alpha of 4%. So note what's going on here. You have your beta exposure in one market in the US and your alpha exposure in a different part of the world, in a different market. So this concept is referred to as a portable alpha, fairly powerful. What is the advantage of this approach? One I alluded to, that clearly your fee is going to be low over here. So rather than go all out with an active manager and pay him a lot of fee, with this you pay a low fee to your passive manager and you give a high fee to your active manager. And then you can also keep track of how your active manager is doing. If he doesn't do such a good job, then obviously you go look for another active manager. So those are the advantages. The disadvantages that while it is easy to talk about these short positions and so on, in many markets, especially emerging markets, it's either too expensive or maybe not even possible. So obviously, before doing the strategy, you need to think about the practicality of following this strategy.